Hi everyone, welcome to the computation of average turnaround time and average waiting time using preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. So when we say preemptive priority scheduling algorithm, it is a priority scheduling algorithm in which the CPU is preempted when a new process arrives. That is, it will start executing the new process if the newly arrived process is of higher priority than the currently running process. Okay, so in the following example, the lesser the given priority number would mean the higher the priority. In case there are two or more process having the same priority to be able to break the tie, we are going to apply the concept of first come first serve to the process having the same priority. Okay, so for us to be able to compute the average turnaround time, we need first to compute the turnaround time of each of our given process. And for us to be able to compute the average waiting time, we need first to compute the waiting time of each of our given process. For us to be able to compute the turnaround time of each of our given process, we need first to determine the completion time of each of our given process. So say for example, we are given here five process, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. And then we also have here their arrival time. So the arrival time of P1 is 2, the arrival time of P2 is 1, the arrival time of P3 is 0, the arrival time of P4 is 5, and the arrival time of P5 is 4. We also have here the priority. So the priority of P1 is 1, priority of P2 is 2, the priority of P3 is 3, the priority of P4 is 4, and the priority of P5 is 5. And of course, we also have here the corresponding worst time. So the worst time of P1 is 6. The worst time of P2 is 7, the worst time of P3 is 4, the worst time of P4 is 5, and the worst time of P5 is 6. Okay, so let us now create a Gantt chart for us to be able to see when a particular process gets the CPU time for its execution and when it finishes its execution. So this is our Gantt chart. So in the Gantt chart, we are going to start from time zero. At this unit of time, we are going to check which process arrive in the ready queue. So we refer to our table. So here, we have here P3, which arrive at time zero. Okay? Since it is only P3, which is in the ready queue at time zero, we are going to allocate the CPU to P3, even though it does not have the highest priority here. So as you can see, its priority is 3. It is not the highest priority here. But since it is only P3, which is in the red queue at time 0, so we are going to allocate the CPU to P3. So in the gun chart, we have here P3. And P3 will execute until the next arrival time. Okay? So, we refer to our table, the next arrival time after 0 is 1. So, that means P3 will execute until 1 unit of time. Okay. So, at time 1, okay, so at this unit of time, which is 1, okay, P2 arrive in the ready queue. So, therefore, we are going to compare the priority of P2 and the priority of P3. So the priority of P2 is 2, the priority of P3 is 3, which has higher priority. So P2 has higher priority than that of P3 since its priority is 2 while the priority of P3 is 3. So therefore, since P2 has higher priority than that of P3, we are going to allocate the CPU to P2. So in the gun chart, we have here P2. Okay. The worst time of P3 is 4. It executes here for 1 unit of time. So therefore, from 4, the worst time of P3 will now be equivalent to 3. 
Okay? Meaning, it still needs 3 units of time to complete its execution. Okay? So, P2 will execute until the next arrival time. So, we refer again to our table. So, here, the next arrival time after 1 is 2. So, that means P2 will execute until 2. Okay. At this unit of time, which is 2, okay, we check which process arrived in the ready queue. Okay. So, at time 2, P1 is in the ready queue. Okay. So, therefore, we compare the priority of P1 and P2. The priority of P1 is 1. The priority of P2 is 2. So, which has higher priority? So, P1 has higher priority than that of P2. So, therefore, we are going to allocate the CPU to P1. Okay. And the worst time of P2 from 7, it will now become 6. Okay. So, meaning it still needs 6 units of time to be able to complete its execution. So, P1 will execute until next arrival time. Next arrival time after 2 is 4. Okay, so that means P1 will execute okay, until 4. At this unit of time, which is 4, we check which process are in the ready queue. Okay, so we refer to our table. Okay, so we have here P5, which arrived at time 4. So therefore, we compare the priority of P5 okay, and the priority of P1. Okay, the priority of P1 is 1. The priority of P5 is 5. P1 has higher priority than that of P5. So, therefore, okay, we are going to execute still P1. Okay, and okay, P1 will execute until next arrival time. Okay, so the next arrival time after 4 is 5. So, that means P1 will execute until 5. Okay, and then at time 5, we check which process arrived in the ready queue. So, in the table, we have here P4 which arrived in the ready queue at time 5. Okay, so we compare the priority of P4 and P1. The priority of P4 is 4, the priority of P1 is 1. So, P1 has higher priority than that of P4. So, therefore, we are still going to execute P1. Okay? Now, since at this unit of time, which is 5, okay, all process are in the ready queue already, okay, this algorithm will now work like simple non-preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. Okay? So, P1 will execute until we check for the worst time of P1. The worst time of P1 is 6. However, okay, it already executed here for how many unit of time? Okay, so we have here 4 minus 2 is 2 for 2 unit of time execution of P1 here. And 5 minus 4 is 1. So 1 unit of time execution of P1 here. So all in all, okay, we have here 3 unit of time. Okay, execution time of P1, okay, it needs 6 unit of time to be able to complete its execution. So, therefore, we still need 3 unit of time to be able to complete its execution. So, therefore, we're going to add 3 to 5 here. So, we now have here 8. Okay, next. Okay, so P1 is already done with its execution. Okay, the next in priority is P2. Okay, so the worst time needed by P2 to complete its execution is 6. So therefore, okay, we have here P2 and it will execute for 6 unit of time. So we are going to add 6 to 8 here. So we now have here 14. Okay, the next in priority is P3 which has uh, this priority 3. Okay, it still needs 3 unit of time to be able to complete its execution. So, therefore, okay, so we have here P3 and we're going to 
add here 3. Okay, so we now have here 17. Okay, the next in priority is P4. Okay, so we have here P4 and it will execute for 5 unit of time. Okay, so therefore we add 5 to 17 here. We have here 22. And finally, we have here the last in priority which is P5 since its priority is 5. Okay, so therefore we're going to allocate the CPU to P5 and it will execute for 6 unit of time. So therefore we're going to add the 6 to 22. So we now have here 28. Okay, so since we are already done with our GAN chart, we can now determine the completion time of each of our given process. Okay, we start from the completion time of P1. So P1 is uh, here in the GAN chart. This is its completion time. Okay. Then P2, okay, so this is P2 in the GAN chart. This is its completion time, 14. Then we have here P3. So, this is P3 in the Gantt chart. This is its completion time, 17. Then we have here P4. This is its completion time, 22. And finally, we have here P5. This is its completion time, 28. Okay? Since we already determined the completion time of each of our given process, we can now compute the turnaround time of each of our given process using the formula completion time minus arrival time. So we are going to start from computing the turnaround time of P1. Okay, so the turnaround time of P1 is now equivalent to its completion time 8 minus its arrival time which is 2. So the turnaround time of P1 is 6. The turnaround time of P2 is equivalent to its completion time which is 14 minus its arrival time which is 1. So it's now equivalent to 13. The turnaround time of P3 is its completion time, which is 17 minus its arrival time, which is 0. So the turnaround time of P3 is 17. Mm -hmm. The turnaround time of P4 is equivalent to its completion time, which is 22 minus its arrival time, which is 5. So the turnaround time of P4 is 17. And the turnaround time of P5 is its completion time minus its arrival time. So 28 minus 4. So therefore, the turnaround time of P5 is 24. Okay. So now we are ready to compute for the waiting time of each of our given process using the formula turnaround time minus burst time. So we start from computing the waiting time of P1. Okay. The waiting time of P1 is equivalent now to its turnaround time, which is 6 minus its burst time which is 6. So therefore, the waiting time of P1 is 0. The waiting time of P2 is its turnaround time which is 13 minus its burst time which is 7. So the waiting time of P2 is 6. The waiting time of P3 is its turnaround time which is 17 minus its burst time which is 4. So therefore, the waiting time of P3 is 13. The waiting time of P4 is its turnaround time, which is 17 minus its burst time, which is 5. So therefore, its waiting time is 12. And the waiting time of P5 is its turnaround time, which is 24 minus its burst time, which is 6. So the waiting time of P5 is 18. Okay, so since we already have our turnaround time and waiting time, okay, for each of our given process, we can now compute the average turnaround time and the average waiting time. So we are going to start computing the average turnaround time. And it is now equivalent to the turnaround time of P1, which is 6, plus the turnaround time of P2, which is 13, plus the turnaround time of P3, which is 17, plus the turnaround time of P4, which is 17, plus the turnaround time of P5, which is 24, Okay, so then we divide it by the number of process, which is 5. Okay, so 6 plus 13 plus 17 plus 17 plus 24 is equivalent to 77. Then we divide it by 5. Okay, so our computed average turnaround time is 15.4. Then the average waiting time is now equivalent to the waiting time of P1, which is 0 plus the waiting time of P2, which is 6, plus the waiting time of P3, which is 13, 
plus the waiting time of P4, which is 12, plus the waiting time of P5, which is 18. Then divide it by the number of process, which is 5. So 0 plus 6 plus 13 plus 12 plus 18 is equivalent to 49 divided by 5. So our computed average waiting time is 9.8. Okay, these are our computed average turnaround time and average waiting time using preemptive priority scheduling algorithm.